Hello everybody, Max here, and today we're going to compare the two types of cargo ships that were made famous in the Second World War, the Victory Ship and the Liberty Ship. The Liberty Ship was the primary class of cargo ship built in the United States during World War II. The ship was actually a British idea, but the design was adapted by the United States because of its simple, low-cost construction, and it was mass-produced on an unprecedented scale. In fact, it came to symbolize U.S. wartime industrial output. The class was originally developed to meet the British orders for transport to replace ships that had been torpedoed by German U-boats, but the vessels were eventually acquired for the U.S. maritime fleet as well. 18 American shipyards built 2,710 Liberty ships between 1941 and 1945. Easily the largest number of ships of a single class ever produced. But their Liberty ships had their limitations. They only went about 11 and a half knots and because of the relatively narrow 30 inches between frame members, they did not flex very well and were prone to crack. In fact, a couple of them actually cracked in half and sank. Because a convoy is restricted to the speed of the slowest ship, they slowed entire convoys down to about 10 knots, making them somewhat easy prey for German U-boats. This led to the design of the Victory ship. It was a follow-on class of cargo ship, which was also produced in large numbers by six shipyards, five of them on the west coast. The Victory ship was a more modern design compared to the earlier Liberty ship, and was slightly larger and more powerful with steam turbines giving a higher speed. This allowed the convoys to go faster and made them harder targets for U-boats. Now a direct comparison between the ship shows that 2,710 Liberty ships were completed as compared with only 534 Victory ships. But the Victory ships did not see production and service until early 1944. Although comparable in size, the Victory ship was slightly longer. The Liberty ship was slightly smaller in all dimensions, 441 feet versus 455 feet long, a 56-foot beam as opposed to a 62-foot beam on the Victory ships, and a 27-foot 9-inch draft versus a 28-foot draft. Also, the Victory ship had its framing members spread apart to approximately 3 feet between members. This allowed the ship to flex more, and along with certain reinforcing techniques, the cracking problems went away. But the biggest difference between the two was the propulsion system. The Liberty ship, because it was made to be cheap and produced quickly, had an old school triple expansion steam engine that put out 2,500 horsepower and two oil-fired boilers. This is why it could only go 11 and a half knots, but it could go 20,000 miles. Although the Victory ship also had a single screw, and oil-fired boilers like the Liberty ship, it had a pair of steam engines that generated considerably more power, allowing it to move as fast as 17 knots, and it could cruise at 15 knots. This was really the key difference between the two. The Victory ship weighed in slightly more than the Liberty ship, at 15,200 tons with a 28-foot draft, compared to the Liberty ship's 14,474 tons. Both of them carried between 10 and 11,000 pounds of cargo. They both had a comparable crew complement and defensive armament, so nothing too much had changed there. The Victory ship did have a higher bow, which allowed for better wave-breaking action. In the end, the 3,244 ships of both classes simply overwhelmed the enemy forces. We literally built them faster than the enemy could sink them. And there is a quick and dirty neck and neck comparison of the Victory ship to the Liberty ship. Two icons of American industrial might. Well, this is Max. I hope you enjoyed this brief little history lesson, and thanks for watching.